On February 4th, ChemChina agreed to pay $43 billion for Swiss seed and pesticides group Syngenta. Well, typically when we think about mergers in there, the impact of a merger on competition, we have two companies with similar uh, market space uh, that are competing that merge. The recent Dow DuPont uh, merger would be a more traditional merger where you have two of the top eight companies uh, in the agricultural chemical realm uh, that have merged. And obviously when two of the top eight merge, that means that their market share uh, can increase significantly and therefore increase uh, uh, market concentration and possible market power uh, in that market space. Chem China does not have any seed operations. So therefore, uh, when they buy Syngenta, that does not have any impact on the market concentration in, in the seed industry, for example. Um, so antitrust regulators um, will not have the usual um, reasons for looking at a merger of this type. Uh, for example, earlier, ChemChina bought a tire company uh, that, that was a very, again, a very unusual merger of two very different types of companies that, that does not raise the usual uh, questions about uh, antitrust, market concentration, and market power. So the first thing is that, that we're not going to see the usual changes that we would see in uh, market concentration out of this type of a merger. Uh, the other thing that's very unusual here is you have a state-owned company, ChemChina, which is owned by, entirely by, the, the uh, government of China that is buying a major agricultural company. This is the largest acquisition of a foreign company by any China company. It is a huge deal in, the, in those terms. Um, but you've got a state-owned company here. Um, that will eventually, I think, raise questions, even though they have said that Syngenta will continue to operate as a, as a separate entity. I think that will eventually raise questions about, all right, is the pricing of products coming from Syngenta somehow being influenced by funds that might be flowing from, say, uh, the broader company and therefore if you will, the Chinese government into Syngenta. Uh, that raises questions of pricing transparency then of the products that might be sold. Um, so those are the types of issues that are likely to be asked about here, which are very unusual uh, compared to our usual antitrust cases. Kim China has been on a very aggressive acquisition drive in recent years. Now, some of that has been in non-agricultural areas. For example, they bought the Pirelli Tire Company from Italy. Uh, they have bought a couple of energy companies recently. They are having a very broad-based acquisition strategy right now. Uh, there's no question, that I think, that this rep does represent um, an intention on their part to begin to bring some new technologies to Chinese agriculture. Uh, China has traditionally not used GMO technology uh, domestically in their own production. Uh, China's yields uh, per acre at this point are somewhere in the range of 20 to perhaps 30 percent lower than other countries. Um, China is very sensitive to the issue of whether they are dependent upon uh, imported food to feed their people. Uh, and they know that they have to uh, continue to try to improve productivity. So I think a lot of people see this as um, uh, the purchase of the seed unit of um, Syngenta as a means of bringing some GMO technology to use uh, eventually inside China uh, and that that may be one of the most important elements of this uh, of all. Um, if that's a part of uh, their strategy, then uh, that would also mean that they are probably expecting that there will eventually be uh, 
uh, and acceptance of GMO technology uh, inside China uh, from other companies, uh, as well as um, greater willingness to import GMO products than, than they've exhibited sometimes in the past. There are some other issues, uh, however, that are very unusual here. And I go back again to this issue. This is a state-owned company. The U.S. Department of Treasury uh, does have a committee on international uh, uh, finance that examines these types of mergers. And in the past year, they have rejected a couple of these mergers, one involving a Chinese uh, company uh, that wanted to buy a wind farm in the U.S. And the U.S. Uh, Committee for International Investments was uh, concerned that uh, that wind farm w was located uh, too close to some military bases. So there are some is unusual issues here given the unusual nature of the Chinese company being a state-owned entity. Uh, and I anticipate that those are the types of issues that are also possibly going to come into play here. This is such a large deal and such a complex deal that I could see any number of ways that it could still uh, come under question and uh, possibly not follow through. Um, that could be something where the shareholders say, why didn't we take the higher number from Monsanto? Um, now, I think part of Syngenta's strategy is if we merge with, some, if we try to merge with Monsanto, we will really be under regulatory antitrust scrutiny, which will be much more difficult to pass than our merger with ChemChina, where we're merging with a non-seed company. Um, but I think there are still a number of questions, uh, both for stockholders uh, and for in the regulatory realm, where this issue uh, is still going to play out and there's still going to be a lot of questions that are going to be answered before this will all be final.